So, hello and welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Um, uh, before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land which we meet and of course um, all of us who might be meeting from um, across Australia. Um, I pay respects to um, their elders past, present and future. Um, as I said, my name is Victoria and as you can probably read on my little tag there, um, thanks for attending the first boot camp session. Um, we're really excited to have you here today um, and we have got um, a great conversation planned, so we hope you enjoy it. Um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the sponsors and funders who've made this session possible, the Surf Tools Foundation and JTM Foundation as well. Uh, should you need anything throughout this session, um, you'll be able to contact me just via the chat function. Um, basically, I'll be here in the background. Um, and it's just a reminder that this session is being recorded um, and I can see that you've all got your microphones um, and cameras off, which is fantastic. Um, and we do ask that you just put them off um, for the duration. Um, however, we really welcome questions from you throughout the conversation. So please use the chat um, function for that. And we will have some time at the end as well uh, for any of those questions that we want to um, discuss with you. Uh, so please feel free to um, ch chat with us uh, throughout. Um, I'm basically going to hand over now. Um, I just want to say, um, you know, a huge thank you to our speakers um, today and our authors, uh, Suki Kasala and Nova Whitman. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, and of course, finally, introduce you to our amazing moderator, um, Catalina Fox, who will be taking the reins from here and uh, leading the conversation. So thank you, and um, we will uh, speak to you soon. <laughs> Uh, so welcome everybody. I am Catalina Cox and I'd also like to begin by acknowledging that I am on the land of the Anawan people here today, um, but obviously everyone else is on the other traditional custodians. So, you know, just um, acknowledging that. And so today I'd like to welcome to our panel our two authors, um, Sukjit Kulkalsa <laughs> and Nova Wheatman. Hi. <laughs> And so I have some little intros about each of you guys. So Sukjit Kaur Khalsa is a playwright, poet, and screenwriter. Her passion for storytelling and authentic representation has led her to compete in the Australian Poetry Slam competition 2014 as a finalist, perform on Australia's Got Talent 2016 as a semi-finalist, and speak at TEDx UWA 2017, as well as TEDx Newtown 2019. She has performed with notable artists such as Missy Higgins and Elle Fresh the Lion, and her poetry and community arts projects have led her to tour globally and across her nation. In 2019, Sukjit premiered her debut theatre show, Fully Seek, with Barking Gecko Theatre Company and Black Swan Theatre Company. Sukjit is currently developing two TV projects. What Would Suki Do is a dramedy series based on her childhood, and her rom-com, One of the Good Ones, is being developed through a US accelerator program, Imagine Impact. So join Subjit's boot camp on Tuesdays in March for your chance to learn how to express <laughs> yourself through slam poetry and unleash your inner poetic voice. <laughs> and Nova Wheatman's prose has appeared in various literary magazines, including Kill Your Darlings, Island, Tira Lira, Wet Ink, Mislexia, and Overland. She has written for the television series H2O and Neighbours. She has also wrote the short films Ripples and Mr. Wasinski's Song, for which she re received an Augie nomination for the Best Short Screenplay, as well as a Best Short Film Award from the Melbourne International Film Festival. Nova has published three middle grade novels, including The Secrets We Keep in 2016. Everything is Changed is her third novel for young adults. Her first, The Haunting of Lily Frost, was shortlisted in the 2014 Aurealis Awards for Best Young Adult Novel. Join Nova's boot camps on Thursdays in March for your chance to learn how to turn your story ideas is into binge watching sensations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't write those. <laughs> um, so I have obviously some questions that, um, you know, some information for your boot camps. So I'm going to start off with why were you interested in screenwriting as a career and what were the influences that helped you get started? So Nova, you can answer this one first. Oh, okay. So going back to when I was a kid, my dad worked in, he was a copywriter in advertising and he, so whenever he wrote an ad, he, 
if you needed children in the ads, my brother and I would get dragged in as actors. And I wasn't very good as an actor, but it was great fun. And it meant that we spent a lot of our childhood hanging out on a film set. And, you know, film sets are like food and kind of excitement. And especially when you're young, it's really exciting. And so I knew that that was somewhere I really wanted to be. I wanted to work on a film set. And I tried acting. I did acting classes at St. Martin's and it was very clear to everybody that I had no talent at all in that area. So I had to find another way onto a film set. And I was quite shy, I guess, when I was younger. And the idea of having to speak in public like this would have been terrifying. So for me, writing just felt, felt like a really natural kind of um, way into a film set. And I was writing a lot of short fiction, a lot of prose. I used to write on an old typewriter when I was a kid and I wanted to be Agatha Christie. So I started writing screenplays and a friend of mine came to me when I was in first year uni and said, write me a short film. And I did. I wrote this short film called Ripples and we got funding from Film Victoria and it just sort of snowballed. It wasn't really a conscious decision. It just sort of happened. And then we made Ripples and it was just being on that film set was everything that I'd had as a child. And it was just really exciting. So I loved it. It was great. And good collaboration, which I think I missed on when I was writing on my own, writing prose. So, yeah. Does that sort yeah. of answer that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so why were you interested in like slam poetry as a career? I feel like slam poetry found me um, because I fell into an open mic night one night um, and I didn't know anything about slam poetry or anything, but I learned the competitive form. That's where I first started getting into it. So that's more like slam and it's timed. There's a lot more rules. Um, and then it culminates in a massive like national slam, which I was very lucky to perform in. And that's where my like eyes got opened to people who are artists and they make, make a living from their art. And I'd never experienced that. I did a political science degree. I had a very, um, I had an artistic family in that we have a lot of cultural practices that are very artsy, but we wouldn't consider ourselves as artists or anything. And I didn't really have any friends who, you know, role, like role models out there in my family or my circles that really exposed me to that. I'd never been to the theatre, um, but I used to make things up at home. Like there was a lot of like home theatre going on um, and poetry. I had a little diary and I would write really sappy, lame, angsty, emo poetry. Um, <laughs> but when I got exposed to slam poetry through a YouTube clip um, of Sarah Kay, um, who's, you know, one of those go-to slam poets that people find through TEDx or they find through like YouTube. And I was like, oh my God, this is a really cool way to express yourself. Um, and it's a good, and at that time, I love the idea of being a solo artist because I was like, oh my God, I can just pick up my suitcase. All I need, I don't even need a microphone. I can just do this wherever. And at, at some point I used to do it on the train going to uni because anytime something um, at that time, I think I was a bit more braver. If anything racist or um, misogynistic or something like gross was going on, I thought my poetry could save the world. Now this was like six to eight years ago. So things have changed since, I'm less brave. I don't do any public performances as much, um, but I fell in love with the form. I fell in love that you could express yourself so clearly heart on your sleeve um, and that was my personality so this was a good a good form to spread my message and my message came from not only coming from a Sikh background and experiencing bullying and experience, experiencing racism and seeing a lot of um, horrible things out in the community um, I also wanted to talk to my community as well about things that were facing young girls and I thought instead of blaming people and pointing the finger art and poetry was a good way to let people in and that's that's where it's kind of led me now where using those communication skills I've been able to like resolve a lot of things with myself and my family and my community but also um have I've gained a lot of confidence so that's been my sort of journey yeah so why do you think teens who sign up for this workshop should like learn slam poetry? Why do you think they should, you know, use it as a creative means? I used to try to convert everyone to do poetry. I used to 
tell teachers that if I could walk into a school and even the students that hate poetry, I could convert them. But now I've changed my mind. I don't think it's about everyone has to be an artist and everyone has to be a poet and a writer. I think it's more about trying new things mm. and testing ourselves and challenging ourselves to perhaps do things that might help other careers. So I don't think everyone has to be an artist, even though I used to believe that. I think that being in this poetry unit, doing this poetry class, it might open up your way into different things that you never thought you'd be able to do. For example, um, if you have a fear of public speaking or if you have a fear of talking about your emotions, this is a really cool way to learn how to do that. It gives you the skills to remove yourself from you. That's how I had to deal with it. When I was coping with something at school, I would write it down and then I would perform it because not only writing it down is helpful, but performing it out loud is an amazing way to actually remove yourself. I know that sounds a bit weird, but for me, it really worked because the more I performed that poem, the easier it got for me to deal with that issue, the less affected I would get. So it's not just a life skill that I feel poetry can give you, but then also on like the literary, um, literary level, there's great techniques that you can learn in poetry on how to articu articulate yourself in really clear ways and quick ways. Because poetry is a very short form, especially slam poetry. Sometimes you only get like two minutes to like deliver your message. And I talk a lot. So slam poetry has taught me how to be really concise. So if you are looking for skills on how to express yourself, um, how to uh, speak clearly, how to deal with public speaking, this is a great space for you to learn that. And obviously, if you're a poetry lover, then that's easy. You're going to love this love this class. Yeah, I actually did um, slam poetry at school. And if I had done like a workshop, I, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I definitely would have, uh, you know, benefited from that a lot because you know, it was it was really weird just trying to write something. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So um, Nova, like why? Uh, do you think that teens should learn how to write screenwriting? How, why do you think they should? I think, so when I started out, so I, I guess before I wrote short film, I wrote short plays and I really, I loved theatre and I loved the concept of being that really immediate sense of being on stage and of writing. Uh, I love writing dialogue. I think writing those kind of art forms really hone your ability to write beautiful dialogue. But when I was writing plays, I realised I had no idea how to get people on or off the stage. And so I never knew how to end anything. And it was really kind of, I just would write one act scenes because I just couldn't actually get people, I couldn't write a series of scenes because I didn't know how to end them because nobody had ever taught me the skill of writing a play. And I think that's why I went into writing screenplays because you just cut. <laughs> It's a much easier art form in that way. But you have to think about all sorts of things that when I started thinking about writing screenplays, I'd never thought about before. Lighting and sound and um, atmosphere and tone and learning about how to create that sense of a character being ahead of you, ahead of the audience, behind the audience and with the audience. And that tension that you get when you're watching something really great, when you're constantly shifting those things that I'd never thought of as a writer. And I think having, even if you don't ever wanna be a screenwriter, learning the skills that I learned when I was writing screenplays, I think made me a much better prose writer and a, and a much better writer overall, because I think you just think about um, what you see differently. I'm not a visual person. And so I had to learn how to see a scene very differently than how I would normally just think about the internal workings of a character. Cause I think that's my natural place. Um, so hopefully teens would learn something new about the way they approach an art form. And I think what Sukjit said was really interesting in that it's about just learning to express yourself in whatever form that comes. And I don't think we know that until we try a million different forms really. And then we sort of slowly start to hone what it is that makes us sing as an artist or just as someone who gets joy out of it in a small way. So, yeah. Yeah, so why do you think that screenwriting is a good means for you to express yourself? Oh, okay. Um, I think that I, when I was younger, definitely, maybe not so much now, but when I was younger, I found writing 
sitting and writing prose alone, a very lonely process. And what I found really lonely was that I would write it. And because I'd be too frightened to show it to anyone, there'd never be an audience for that work. It would just stay entirely in my lounge room or in my bedroom in a drawer. I think the benefit for me in, in becoming a screenwriter and learning how to have um, have bravery, like if we're talking about bravery, I think that's such a good thing to talk about as an artist and have the bravery to go, here's something I've written and to give it to someone else and to trust that they would bring something to that vision as well. It becomes a collaboration and you become, I guess I could be uh, less afraid as an artist because I was working collaboratively. And so I could trust that there was a group of people that would each cast their magic on that story and together we would make something beautiful. So that is the great thing for young people is that you can start to tell those stories with your friends because you write the screenplay, you give it to someone else, they shoot it, someone else acts it, someone else does the music. Those skills are all very, very easy to, you know, to kind of access now because of technology. So I think you can, it's just an entry point to making collaborative storytelling, I would say. Yeah. And so for subject, why do you think slam poetry is a good means for you to express yourself or for teens to express themselves? I think it was similar to what I said before about um, you never know where these skills will take you. And I think for me, when I started the journey of becoming an artist and calling myself an artist. Um, I didn't know that I'd be where I am today. And I think it's taken a very unexpected route. And I think it surprised my family as well um, to be in your bedroom and riffing up some poetry lines and then taking it to different audiences. And I think for me, I've really fallen in love with um, audience, but that doesn't mean that everyone has to have an audience as well, if that makes sense. Like, I think that doing poetry, it can be something that is really personal. It can just be for you. You can just perform it for you. You can do it in front of the mirror. You can do it in front of your pets. You can do it for your family. Um, or it can you can take it to the next level. And it's, a, it's honestly a matter of what you want to do with it. And I personally, it could have been any other art form. It just happened to be poetry at that point. And now it's evolved into theatre and it's evolved into screenwriting. And you can see similarities between Nova and myself where it doesn't, sometimes it's about trying different forms and seeing which one sticks. And it changes throughout your lifetime. Like I, I was obsessed with going to poetry slams. I was obsessed with um, entering poetry competitions or doing performances in that way. Um, but now I'm changing my mind about things and I'm going, you know what, I want to use those exact same skills I learned and I want to tell a story in another way and I want to challenge myself in a different way. Um, so you just never know where these like foundation skills will take you. Um, I feel like there's people that I used to meet who had um, jobs in like accounting or law um, and then they'd come to my workshops and they'd learn how to do a poem and the thing about doing slam poetry, which makes it more unique, is it generally is about you. And it's generally about your authentic self. So imagine these amazing like public speakers who earn a living from speaking every day and they're running companies, but they walked into a workshop and they found it really hard to talk about themselves and do public speaking in that way. So that just shows it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It's a big challenge to be able to speak from your heart. But once you get over that hump and you get that confidence and you, and you try it, it can give you, I feel like it can give you this inner confidence where you can conquer the world or just <laughs> conquer your world. That's okay as well. And I think that it'll be really nice, especially because we're going to be doing it over Zoom that does take away less, more nervousness. I feel like if you're in a space with other people staring at you, it can get really scary. But the great thing is you're going to be doing it from your comfort zone. You're going to be doing it from your bedroom, from your house, wherever you are, at school, whatever it is. And I think that makes it even easier for you to step into that zone and, yeah, express yourself. So uh, Nova, do you think there are specific topics that work better on screen rather than say like no, no novels? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, that's so annoying. Nine. Um, oh, oh, good. Oh, oh, <laughs> um, I think that I, I would say that really internalised thinking and that very small scale story that I tend to write as a novelist, I'm really, I love kind of tracking emotional states with characters and really following their emotional journey. That's very hard to tell as a screenplay because it's exter you're externalizing everything and you're turning it all into action. Unless you've got a voiceover, it becomes what you can see on the screen. So, but, but that, that said, that my f second short film that I made, Mr. Wazinski's Song, was based on a short story that I'd written. And there's almost, it's 16 minutes long and there's almost no dialogue. So it is actually mostly his internalized thinking. And we had to work out ways to make that something that you could see. And we used a, sound, a really amazing sound design that could try and track how that character was thinking about his memories, where his world was, um, the torture of his past, all of those sort of things. So there are ways to do, I think, every story in both forms. But I think for me, um, I love writing dialogue. That is my happy place. Like I actually love, and I love sitting on trams and just listening to people talking and then just jotting it down and going one day, one day I'll borrow that. Um, just those beautiful little moments that you catch between characters that I think you can do them. You can definitely write those in prose in, in novel form, but I think on screen, it's just, a, they're just beautiful moments that you can capture so much with great dialogue. So I think I think probably more externalised action and more talking work better in screenplays and more kind of internalised thought and, and emotional states work better in books. But but I wouldn't rule out either for, yeah, that, that's like hedging my bets both ways. Sorry, Catalina, it's not quite. <laughs> um, yes. Well, there's a, yeah. So I, so I guess, I guess from my personal background I mean I've written television like neighbors which is all dialogue and nothing happening which are not my stories obviously you're given the story and you just write the dialogue and I've written um, short films which are my stories and I've written short uh, feature films which are my stories and those are all much more um, action driven I suppose than than character than internalized thought yeah do you agree Sukjit like have you because you've done both forms Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I remember the first time I would have written um, like a scene breakdown. Oh, sorry. It's so like uh, I would have written like an outline for a scene. It would have been so um, novel-esque. Like yeah. it would have been so detailed. And also it had like alliteration. It had like poetry techniques. Yeah. It. I was so used to <laughs> writing in a certain way. <laughs> That's really fun. But that like it did no. not need to be there. Like there no. was such a great way I feel like screenwriting is such an amazing way um with strategy and problem solving and yep. I think if you love problem solving it's a really cool I think it's a really cool form to explore that whereas yeah we're so loose like and I'm so used to in poetry you get like five minutes depending on what you know what gig it is but sometimes it's like a five minute ten minute thing and you can barely get one idea across and it's such a quick, but it's quick in that you don't get much time, but it's slow in that you could explore like a piece of toast for 10 minutes and you could talk about that piece of toast as long as you want. And you could create metaphors out of that. You could create whatever you want from that piece of toast and describe it in its each grain um, and make something of it. But it isn't really doing a lot. Mm. Like I think it's, you can just you can waffle more in poetry and I'm not trying to like diss it I love it like that's for me like it's its own thing but I feel like the great thing about screenwriting I'm learning is that it's about being to the point mm. moving fast and getting like especially comedy like just getting to the point and it's such a great way to get more and more succinct and yeah. to get like and dialogue like I love that your your, your space is like dialogue I really need to improve on my dialogue <laughs> But also that idea too, I think where screenplay, screenplays are almost re removing your ego 
because you're right no one reads it no one cares if the words are pretty on the page it just has to tell it has it just has to do its function it's just one of many parts that go to make something whereas if you're writing prose or a poem it's about the beauty of that construction and it's complete that is about for me that's much more about my ego and writing a screenplay is much more about just giving over and going no one cares if what I'm writing in terms of what's on the page is beautiful or not it just has to be good it has to do its part and that's a really good I think it's a really good thing for an artist to have to have those balanced kind of ways of working it's really benefited me in my novel writing because I just I'm not precious about things being changed because I'm so used to producers just writing a red line through something and going this isn't funny get rid of it (laughs) okay you know so it's like I'm yeah I just think it's a very different approach in your brain as well Yes, so for the teens that sign up for the workshop, like what will they get out of it? What will the focus be and what will they learn? That sort of thing. So so that's quite, this is quite a, you know, broad one, but, you know. Yeah, I'll try my best. Um, (laughs) I feel like we'll be going through a bit of a journey um, where we go into detail from start to finish um, my process of how I write a poem. Um, that doesn't mean it's the right process and it doesn't mean that it's the only process because there's so many people who have very different styles of approaching poetry. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm definitely not the poster child for slam poetry. Um, I'm just going to offer what works for me and then maybe some other techniques that other, other friends of mine, other colleagues of mine have used. We'll go through different exercises each workshop. So by the beginning, you might have an idea or you might have no idea of what you want to talk about. And by the end of the workshop series, hopefully you'll have either a complete poem or you'll have the start of a poem that you can complete in your own time. And maybe we might even try a bit of performing. Um, It'll be interesting to do it via Zoom. I have actually done a poetry slam via Zoom before and it's very interesting because usually it's about the audience's like, Reaction is kind of like being a rock star. You got to have your fans who are like screaming, and like chucking t-shirts or roses at you. Um, but we can still kind of recreate that on Zoom as best as we can. Um, so we might try a little bit of performance techniques, but it'll be mainly focused on how to start from scratch with nothing to actually writing a poem. So I'll talk you through all the different terms. You might have, even at school, you've probably gone through a lot of the stuff, but I think we'll just add my own little zing, my own little spice to it. Um, perhaps stuff that you haven't um, covered, just like you were saying, Catalina, where you learnt it in school, but perhaps there were some things that were missing. So I'll yeah. hope fill in those gaps. We'll be very casual as well. Like I'm really um, excited to meet you and hopefully you'll have your own. And when it comes to giving feedback to all the participants, which I love to do, Um, It's not just about what I think, but I love hearing what other people think about each other's poems. So it'll be a bit of a group process as well. So stay tuned. Yeah, when when I did it at school, she was just like, write a two minute poem, now film it. I was, I had no idea. It was just, you know, like I learned normal poetry techniques, but nothing to do with slam poetry. We like watched one video, that was it. (laughs) Really different. Like a lot of people think that Um, The whole thing about slam poetry or spoken word poetry is that it's not meant to be for the page. It's not meant to be like, there are a lot of poets that will definitely publish their poetry and you've probably read some or seen some um, and that's amazing, but it's mainly written to be performed. Even the way it's been written is as if it's to be performed and it only has life when it is said out loud. So if you keep that in mind, um, it can really change and reframe the way Um, you see poetry it doesn't just have to be dry poetry that you learnt in school which is what I learnt there's a lot more to poetry and you can and it's so loose there's not actually a lot of rules when it comes to spoken word poetry which I love I hate having rules um, in different art forms I think it's great to have rules in certain art forms but in spoken word poetry there's no rules and you can pretty much I once went to a a spoken word poetry night and someone burst into opera singing halfway through their poem. And that taught me a very good lesson where anything's on the table. So, <laughs> so like, uh, why do you think slam poetry topics are usually more about like heavy duty things like religion and politics? I feel like 
it's up to you once again what you want to talk about I like you know if you know a bit about my journey it does come from the poetry that I've written does come from a place of like personal experience and heavy stuff and that was because I didn't know how to express it if I just had a conversation with someone and told them what I really thought about stuff it would be a little bit too intense so using poetry was a way for me to go I'm going to use my language skills I'm going to use my performance skills to express the same stuff and perhaps have a conversation with someone um, and to let them into my world into my shoes um, without being too intimidating and without being too um, pointing any fingers and making an audience not feel great about themselves however that's just my style. Now, there'll be a lot of poets out there who will disagree. And it just depends on what you want to talk about. Like I said, you can talk You can talk about a piece of toast. You can talk about your pets. You can talk about your family. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, but generally, the history of spoken word, uh, and don't quote me because I know this is being recorded, so I could be very wrong. <laughs> the way I was taught about spoken word poetry was that it was a place for people to meet in the underground scene where there was a lot of activism going on. And this is where people who felt like they weren't heard on the streets would come to these spaces and step on, a, what's it called? When you go to Hyde Park in London, mm. the speaker's corner, you'd actually, I actually went there and like you get a little pedestal, you get a little stool and you get up on your stool and you speak from your heart and you speak about what matters to you um now that's just one way of doing things if you have other things that matter to you that have nothing to do with politics nothing to do with social justice that's 100 percent valid um just because someone talks about climate change and someone talks about racism doesn't mean you can't talk about other things um and that's where in this in this workshop series i hope that people will um, come with all forms, all co whatever content you want to talk about. As long as we're not hurting anyone and being disrespectful, I'm very happy to help you with whatever content you want to talk about. So Nova, um, what will the teens who sign up for your workshop get out of it and all the focus of it being so on? <laughs> um, so I think what, my, what I'd love is for people to, over the four weeks, to slowly chip away at an idea for maybe a short film that by the end, again, they can take it away and just work on it at home because they probably won't get it all written. But I think that idea, because often when I teach um, what I come up, like what, what I feel students sometimes find really overwhelming is finishing a, a short piece. Like often students that I work with will be writing and they'll love writing and they'll be writing a novel because they just won't be able to bring it into something short. So we'll look at what makes a great short film. Um, how, sh you know, that could be really short. That could be a minute, that could be 15 minutes, but what makes a great short film, how it can be a moment rather than a whole story compressed down to something. We'll definitely look at character. We'll look at how to construct great characters. We'll look at dialogue and genre and lighting and sound and all of those kind of elements. We'll break down those elements each week and we'll sort of cover each little elements each week and with time to try and get pieces written. So what would be great is if we can sort of chip away at writing scenes over the four weeks. Um, also would, uh, I'll, I'll also talk about um, where I found out that I was really bad at certain sorts of screenwriting. <laughs> And I'll be really honest about the sort, the sort of screenplays that I found I could write and the sort of television shows that I couldn't write and, and why. Um, and we might do a bit of storylining and sitting like in a, in a kind of, which, which is hard with a group this size, but sort of throwing up ideas and trying to create characters as a group and just look at how we could make a story for that character. So try and show teens how I would do it if I was having to come up with a story quickly and then giving them time to just develop those stories and embed them, I guess, into a screenplay. Yeah. You've sold it to me. I want to join. I want to do yours. We could yeah. just <laughs> we could just pretend we're like, yeah, well, it's a fair way of go, a way of go for me. <laughs> I was trying to get my kids to do yours, actually, because I was like, you'd love it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, 
Jasper has been saying that his friends and I have been making a short film and he really wanted to improve his scr screenwriting for awesome. the film made together. So. That's great. That's exactly, I think that that's so, I love the idea that students can just go out and make short films now. Cause I feel like when we shot our films on film, on actual film, like canisters, expensive, you know, you couldn't waste it. it. It just didn't have that freedom. And I feel like now you've got so much freedom just to edit yourself and cut your own soundtracks and, and just really play. And I love that idea that, yeah, you can just play as, as a, as someone who's aspiring to make films. That's great. So for Sukjit, I was just wondering, do you think that slam poetry is becoming a more popular form of communication? Absolutely. I feel like if you have watched um, a Telstra ad or a university <laughs> ad, you would find that a lot of their voiceover artists are either poets that I know or they've got voiceover artists to try to be poets. Um, because I feel like spoken word is turning, even at um, um, Joe Biden's... Um, yeah. yeah, I remember, oh, who was it? I forgot the poet's name, but she did a spoken word poem. So basically at very um, prestigious events, there is now a lot more poetry. Um, however, it's not, it's interesting. It's a myth that people think it's a new thing. Whereas if you look at a lot of hip hop artists, um, even um, a lot of conscious hip hop um, used to, a lot of those rappers started off as spoken word artists. And usually refer to themselves as spoken word artists um and then you know you add a beat and you add music and you add a bit more structure and you've got a rap so um and i don't know if this is correct once again but someone once told me that rap stands for rhythm and poetry so perhaps there is a lot more poetry around us than we actually think um and i think that i'm really glad that people are now um, getting on board and it's becoming much more accessible. It's so awesome to hear that schools are now doing slam poetry. Um, that would have been so much fun um, if I'd known more about that and just been exposed to new ways of expressing. Because um, I, 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 I had no idea. And I remember like trying to explain to people what I did for a living was so hard because I didn't know how to explain what spoken word poetry is. Even my parents, they still tell their friends some weird made up stuff because they don't quite know how to explain. I remember there was a news article once and it said, you know, Sugjeet and her, and her spoken words. And I was like, okay, I'm not sure what that means. I mean, we all speak, um, but it's, it's, it's really nice. It's becoming much more mainstream. Um, yeah. And I think it depends where you are in the world. Like in Australia, perhaps it is still a bit new depending on where you are and what you're exposed to. But a lot of parts of the world, um, if you like in America, for example, like if I tell people on the subway, I'm a poet or I'm a spoken word poet, they know exactly what I'm talking about because they've got friends and they go to regular poetry nights. Um, so it just depends where you are. But um, yeah, it's becoming much more popular, which is lovely. Yeah, so I think we're going to have some audience questions now. Yeah, so there you go. Please. We are. Yeah, we've got some great questions here. Um, the first one up um, is probably for you, Nova, and it might actually be a question that's uh, um, dealt with later in the workshops, but um, maybe you could summarise, if it's not too long, um, how do you write a good main character? Ooh, well, I think the trick to all creation of characters is to know as much about them as you know about yourself. So invest everything in knowing what they eat for breakfast, you know, who their family are, who their friends are, what their fears are, what their wants are, what they're scared of, all of those kind of um, just those really important things that go into the head of a character that even if it doesn't end up on the page, it's just flavouring the way that character responds to situations. So I think you kind of break it down and you know the outside of them, the inside of them, and yeah, just how they how they work in every kind of situation, I would say. We'll do some of that, don't worry. <laughs> Great. And Sukjit, this one will be for you. Um, what was the most difficult time you went through um, that poetry helped you um, deal with? So I was bullied, without going into too much detail, yeah. <laughs> my life story. Um, I was bullied in high school for about four years. And at that time, I didn't know it was called bullying. Or I didn't really understand it. I used to just smile it off or I was taught to just wave it off. 
um, until I got sick of it. And I think that's where the fire in me really grew. And that social justice warrior just got a little bit, um, yeah, just got a little bit angry. And I was like, hang on, I want to do something about this. So I ended up writing what you might not call is a spoken word poem. But at that time, it was just like me delivering what I was feeling. And I delivered it to the bullies. And that is when I first realized that I want to use this as a way to stand up for me, but also stand up for other people who perhaps don't have the privilege of using that voice for this purpose. And I think that was a really great, um, it, it was a happy ending for me, but that I'm quite lucky because it could have also turned pear shaped and it could have been a very different experience for someone else. Um, but I was quite lucky that the guys that were bullying me, they were really apologetic and they were very, they're very understanding. And I, and I am always a believer in speaking from my heart. I know that can get me in trouble sometimes. And I know that it isn't, this world isn't really built for people who are constantly sharing how they feel. Um, and it's about being professional and it's about, you know, masking our feelings and the older we get, the more we're taught to just keep it all in and not share it and bury it. But I think poetry is a great way um, that I know a lot of adults still who would use that as a way to think about things or reflect on things. And it's kind of like, you know, there's a whole trend about mindfulness and meditation and reflection. Um, and I feel like poetry is actually a really great way to do all those things. Um, and maybe we'll just have this final one to wrap it up, but I will ask it of both of you. Um, do you find with your poetry or your characters and your writing um, that it comes to you, uh, I guess, kind of naturally or easy? Or do you feel like sometimes you've got to chase it or have some kind of, I guess, a, I'm not sure what this person's after exactly, but maybe a secret kind of trick to, um, you know, getting those creative juices um, flowing? Uh, maybe Nova, if you want to go first. and we should... Sure. Um... Yeah, that's a, that's a funny one, isn't it? I think sometimes I would say with my prose writing, so writing a book, it's usually something that comes, certainly the character comes quickly. And I am a really shabby writer. Like I'm, I'm lazy and I'm sloppy and I bang out first drafts and they're not very good. And I have to go back and fix it. So often the first draft... I can get down quite quickly because I'm not overthinking it. And I think it's only when I start to overthink it or I start to imagine what the reader will think or will anyone like this that I then get derailed. And so I try and, and I love that idea of being really honest. And I think that there's something about being really honest as a, a you know, when you're writing of just trying to stay in the moment and write the work. But with screenplays, I would say it's much harder for me. And I think it's much harder for me to get them out to begin with because I'm not plotting is not my strong point character is definitely what I'm good at dialogue is what I'm good at plotting is, is really hard for me so writing a screenplay if I haven't written it as a as a story first trying to work out where the beats are are quite hard and it, it's often takes a long time for me to structure that correctly and what I would say is if you're stuck I think for me if I get really stuck reading something really brilliant reading a great book watching a great film watching something that's so good that you're jealous that motivates you to go I can I can write something I can get something on the page is a really good motivator for me and I think just going you can have time out where you're not creative like that's okay you can't always be getting something on the page there is always going to be sort of dead time where your brain is just processing even if you don't realize it's just thinking about things and bubbling stuff over um go for a swim go for a walk whatever it is it just something other than sitting there going oh i've got to write this because that just becomes really overwhelming yeah that's my thoughts <laughs> and also like not only watching good things but for me watching bad things, bad things. <laughs> yeah. things that didn't work and yeah. them, why didn't they work? Why did I switch off? Why did I get bored? Why did I start getting on my phone? Why isn't this working? Has really like made me a better writer because I've started like, or if the content for me, sometimes the content, if it makes me really angry and I'm going, how dare they? I'm going to make something that responds to that. And that's mm -hmm. very egotistical, but I feel like it drives me usually with a poem it's uh, what drives me is something 
um, passionate, something, unfortunately, I don't write a lot of love poetry. Or I don't write a lot of like beautiful poetry about beautiful things, which I wish I did. I find that harder to actually write, but I find it easier if something is bringing out a negative emotion in me, I channel it into a poem. And that's how I start to see different perspectives. And I start to see how might this other person that I'm angry at or this issue that I'm angry at, how, did the, how do you think they might respond to this? And it's almost like a conversation within myself. Um, and then I like edit it so it's a bit more prettier for an audience to kind of palette. But it usually comes from something like earlier, the poetry used to come from things that people have said to me. It used to be one line of dialogue that's spun off into a poem. So it would be something verbatim that someone has said to me and then it would like, just be this mash, like, you know, almost like a diary entry, typing it furiously into my laptop and then revisiting it after I, you know, cool down, less emotions. And then I came back to it and actually edited it like a, like a writer would. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I agree with you, Nova, like it's much easier to bang out something first draft in the sort of prose poetry, mm. but screenwriting takes a lot more thinking, yeah. a lot more time. And it's really hard to like, sit there and go, hmm, I'm going to write, a, I'm going to write a screenplay today. Yeah. <laughs> really hard. Wonderful. Well, thanks. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, it's been really great to have you all here this afternoon and I hope you found um, that really interesting. And obviously we really encourage you to jump online. I've just put the um, link there. Um, so you can find out more about the information sessions that we're running over the next couple of weeks and of course the boot camps themselves um, and we will uh, we'll be posting this video as well so if you've got any friends that um, wasn't that weren't here today that you want to share please um, jump online in the next couple of days and um, share that around and encourage people um, to check it out uh, thanks again to our wonderful um, panelists thank you, thank you everyone <laughs> bye